In this video lecture, I'm going to discuss Euler's method. So Euler's method is a numerical technique um, that is used to approximate a first order uh, differential equation in this form with an initial condition of, let's say, y of x naught equal to some y, y naught value. Okay. So I'm going to go through, um, basically, we're going to, I'm going to go through and derive the iterative formula for this. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to, how you can implement this in a, um, and, and um, using, uh, using Octave. Okay. All right. So this, this numerical technique, obviously being numerical, um, it's going to give us an approximation. So it's not perfect. Uh, but it can um, it give us a, a pretty good solution, to, you know, depending on, you know, depending on the function that we're given. Uh, so this technique is based on a ten, what's called a, um, well, it's basically based on a tangent line uh, approximation. So we're going to utilize the concept of a linear approximation at a point, uh, which is actually a topic from calculus one. Okay. All right. So again, here's our. We have here this is our curve right this represents the solution to your first order differential equation here's our initial value x dot y naught right and so the goal here is that we want to work with this point okay and we want to try and come up with a formula uh, particularly an iterative formula that will give us an approximation for y1 okay and once we do that then we can use the same idea Okay, to come up with an approximation for y2 and, and so on. Okay. All right, so I'm going to draw in, just to, for reference here, I'm going to draw in the tangent line okay, at x naught. So by doing that, you can see, right, um, you can see that here, okay, I'm going to put a point there. So we can use this tangent line to actually give us uh, this point, which is um, what we're going to call we're going to call that y one tilde. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'll write that here. Y one tilde. So y one tilde is going to approximate y one. Okay. So let's let's so let's start with this. Okay. Um, so again, the idea, the idea to the concept behind this is using a linearization approximation, linear, in other words, a linear approximation technique. Okay, so we want to linearize, right? We want to linearize this, right, um, at at x naught. Okay, so this is the equation that we have here. Right, so we have L of x. This is just the basically this is just the y value. Uh, we have this y of dot that's coming from our initial condition, right? Um, and then we have x minus x dot. Okay? Again, x x dot and y dot are known. And if you plug those into the function that's given, well, that's basically telling you the the slope, the slope of the uh, solution that we're trying to look for. Okay. All right. Okay, and uh, furthermore, um, we have each of these x0, x1, x2. So uh, we're using what's called a uniformed um, discretization here, which means that each of the x values is separated by uh, delta x, or sometimes we call that h. Okay. All right, so let's start with our linear approximation here, okay? Okay, we know that, okay, again, the goal is to come up with, right, given x naught is to come up with a formula for y1 tilde, okay? So we know that x1 okay, is going to be equal to x0 plus h. Okay. All right, so then, we do the linear approximation at, at x1, right? 
So why are we doing x1? Well, because remember, we're trying to approximate y1, and that and that's corresponding to x1. So we have L of x1 equals to y naught plus f of x naught comma y naught. And remember, uh, x naught, okay, is sorry, x one is equal to x naught plus h. So I'm going to put in here x one for now. Okay, but again, we don't know, right? Um, typically, we want to use on these kind of methods. We like we desire to use the previous values. Okay, so we have so far we have this. And then x1, I can go ahead and replace, by, replace that by x0 plus h. Okay, and we're going to end up getting y of 0 plus this. And this is just um, h, right? The x0 and x0, x0 minus x0 is just 0, right? So we're going to end up with h here. We get h times f of x0, y0. So I'll put the H value in front there. And L of X1, right? That is basically, again, that's just a linear, right? That's a linear model. Basically, it's just the uh, tangent line going through uh, the point X1, comma, uh, the Y value for this, the Y value for X1. So I'm gonna, so that's why, that's what I'm calling Y1 tilde. So that is y1 tilde. In fact, I'm going to write this as a coordinate. So this is x1, comma, y1 tilde. Okay. So remember, y1 tilde uh, is an approximation for y1. Okay. So that's a good place to start, actually. Um, again, so we're trying to figure out, like, you know, we're trying to come up with an approximate solution. Um, okay, so if, if, you know, this seems to be working, so let's try to do the same type of idea to get an approximation for Y2 for this point, okay? All right, so again, what we can do is, so if we look at the tangent line at this point, at X1, Y1, It puts, it basically puts us close to Y2, okay? So I'm gonna put a point there, okay? So that is X2 comma, and that's what I call Y2 tilde. Okay? All right, so to do that, we can use what we have here. Okay, so we can repeat this idea. All right, so we have L of X2 equals two. Okay, going back to what we had earlier. Right, we have, uh, going back to uh, this one. Okay, let's see here. Okay, we have L of X2 equals to Y1. Remember that we're using, um, we're using a Y1 value. So now Y1 here is basically this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put a Y1 tilde there, plus F of X1, Y1 tilde times okay, X1, plus H minus X1. So where did this come from? Well, again, what we're doing is utilizing what are basically utilizing our previous information here. Okay. Only this time, remember that going back here, remember that we were given the initial value. Okay, so the initial value Right, this basically the solution curve goes to that initial value. 
So in this case, what we need to do is we need to use our estimate, our estimate being, because we don't know, right? We don't know why one and why two, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're trying to use our estimate from the previous one, which is y one tilde, okay? All right, so that's, so basically replacing this, right? So this is acting as y one tilde, okay? I put x one and y one tilde here, and then we have x1 and x1 here, okay? Right? So this, again, the x1 values right here, they're gonna drop out and give us h. So that's going to give us L of x2 equals to y1 tilde plus f of, okay, I'm gonna put the h in front, f of x1, y1 tilde. Okay, so there we go. And that is going to give us y2 tilde, okay? Because we're doing the linearization for x2, okay? Now the thing here to keep it, the, the thing to keep in mind here is that when we remember this, okay, when we plug the function, or when we, yeah, when we evaluate this function at x1, y1 tilde, uh, it's giving us, it's est basically, it's giving us the estimate of the slope of the tangent line that you see in red here, okay? So they're close enough where you can, you know, they're pretty close to each other where you can use it as an estimate. And that's how, that's the primary basis of how this, of how this technique works, okay? So each time you're using, you're approximating the, um, you're using this as a, or approximating the tangent line to the curve at each point. Okay. Right. And then you're getting, and then the idea is that, you, you know, you try to, um, you're going to get for each, for each X value, okay, or after X dot, you're going to get an approximation, okay. And then you basically, you can, um, you can construct this, right, or you can graph these, you know, put a, put a curve to those points. And that curve represents the approximate solution to this first order differential equation. Um, given an initial value, okay? Okay, so there's where we are right now, okay? Um, okay so, so we can, again, so you can sort of see what's happening here. We can do the same thing uh, to get an approximate value for Y3, let's say, that's somewhere here, okay? So we can go ahead and generalize this, okay? So we can Right. So in general, we have okay. What we have is this. Okay. We have. Okay. So we're going to say so the nth plus one, right? Y of nth plus one n plus one value, right? okay? Y of n plus one is equal to Y of n, the previous one, plus, if you notice, H is always, okay? It's always gonna be there, okay? So we have H times the function value at the current, sorry, at the current value, at the cor current co coordinate. So we have X of n comma Y of n, okay? And that is for x of n equals to x of zero plus n times h, okay? where n is going from zero, one, two, and so on. So that is, so this formula right here is basically giving us the discretization for this. So when n is zero, then we just get x zero. But n is one, then we're going to get x zero plus h, which gives us x x one. So that's for n equals to one. But at, when n equals to two, then we get x zero plus two times h. So that's going to be x zero plus one h plus another h, and that gives us x two. Okay. Right. So that's a way to uh, that's a way we can keep. Keep track of our uh, of our x values here. 
Okay. So that is so this formula, this is basically this iteration, this iterated formula is basically Euler's technique. And there's actually two, there's actually two kind of Euler uh, formulas uh, at this level. There's, so there's a, what's called a forward Euler and there's one that's called a backwards Euler, okay? So the one we're doing now um, is we're basically doing a, um, a, a backward Euler technique, okay? So let's see. All right, so let me show you. Again, we're doing, yep, so again, we're doing a backward order. So um, meaning that we're using previous data points, right? Um, there is something called, there is another one called the forward order method, which is a little bit more complicated uh, because that formula, it relies on some um, it re basically relies on the, um, on the data that's in basically in the in forward, right? In the front, okay? It doesn't rely on previous data. Okay? It relies on forward data, forward points, okay? So that is called the forward, or forward, forward Euler's method, which is actually um, kind of a, uh, I would say, a prelude to what's called the Roger Cutter method. Okay, which if I have time, I'll discuss that in another video eventually. Okay. Um, so you can think of this. This is, you know, some people refer to this as the basic Roger Cutter formula, which is actually true. Um, this is just the, this is the main ingredient for the other tank, for the Roger Cutter method. Okay. Um, there's a lot of similarities between this and that other one. All right. So let's. All right, so let's use, um, oh, let's take a look at a particular example here. And then I'm gonna show you how to, uh, how we can uh, implement this in a, um, using a computational, uh, like a computational uh, program, such as in this case, I'm gonna use Octave. Okay. Uh, by the way, just like with uh, Riemann sums, the, right, the, the spacing, right? You're as h, you know, as h goes to zero here. Okay, the smaller the h value, the better the approximation. Okay. All right, let's okay, let's go through let's go through an example here. Okay, so just right here. All right, let's look at an example here. All right, so let's say you want to use Euler's method. To approximate Okay, IVP, the initial value problem for Y prime equals to Y, where Y of zero is equal to one. So there's our initial condition, okay? And let's use H equal to, let's say I'm using uh, point, 0 0.1 here. Okay. All right. So we have our initial value. Okay. This is just zero comma one, right? So we know we definitely know that the solution curve, right, uh, goes to this point. Okay. 
So we have basically we have everything we need, right? We just use this um, use this iterative uh, iterative um, formula. Okay. So we start with right, our n equals zero. Okay. We have y. So y one equals to y of zero plus h, which is point one times y naught. But why not, right? Um, why not is going to be, so where do we get that? So that's basically, remember that's H. So the function we're working with here, remember it can be in terms of X or H. So the function here is going to be Y, okay? So we, that, so because um, Y, okay, why not, uh, Y is at, at zero, Y is one. If you have, right, if it was, let's say, x times y, right, then it would just be, uh, you would have zero times one here, okay? So basically, you just evaluate your function at whatever this point is, okay? Okay, so let's simplify this. Uh, this is going to give us, uh, so why not, we said, was one. In fact, I'm going to reiterate this. I'll just write it this way, just in case. So that's what we have from there, okay? Um, since this is just y, this becomes this is just y1 equals to y naught plus 0 0.1. This part right here is just going to be, right, what? Okay, and so y naught, y naught is, is one, right, obviously. So this is going to be 1.1, one. okay? All right, there's our first value, okay? And then we do the same thing for n equals to one. But when n is one, this is gonna be y2. We have y1 plus same h value that, that will never change for this, okay? And then we have, again, so point 0.1 times, okay, we have, okay, um, I'm going to write this way. So we have f of, remember that we have the function value f of, f of uh, x, y, which is just y, okay? So that's y1, okay? All right, so that's, again, that's coming from here. Okay, so this is going to give us, we have, so y1 was, was um, attained from the previous step. We have y point one, sorry, one point one plus zero point one times one point one, and that's going to give us one point two one. Okay, but that gives us our second value. Okay, and then let's do this one more time. For n equals two, we have y three equals to y two plus zero point one times y two. So this is so y two is coming from the previous step. Okay, we have one point two one plus zero point one times one point two one. And then um, so going to the went to the arithmetic here, you're going to get one point three. One. So let's say around to uh, three decimal places here. So you get the idea now, right? Okay. So again, so the solution here, okay, so we have the initial value, okay, zero, in this case, zero, one. We have the next value, okay. In fact, we can build a table from here. Let's see, I have some space here. Okay, so we have uh, zero, one. Okay. The next one was for uh, for the next x value right, that was going to be uh, point one. 
Okay. And that was, let's see, 1.1. The next one was for 0 0.2. Just so 1.21. Okay. And then finally for, for so it's for 0, 1, 10, 0, 1, 2. Uh, or sorry, this was for initial, this is for n equals 0, this is for n equals 1, and then finally okay, for 0 0.3, we had 1.331. Okay. All right, so basically we're getting right uh, approximation. Uh, we're getting the approximate solution here. Okay. okay. So now uh, let's see. Check something here. So if you, right, we know that, okay, so going back, we know if you think about it, y prime equals to y, y prime equals to y. Um, obviously, the solution, the, the actual solution to this is um, it's going to be um, the exponential function, right? Okay, because when you take its derivative, then you get itself. So if you take e of zero, obviously that's going to be one. Um, e to the point one will be approximately this. E to the point two is approximately this. E to the point three is approximately this. Okay. So one thing is that again, this is just an this Euler's method is just an approximation, right? So and because of the curvature here, and due to the fact, um, due to the you know the technique of how this was being created, um, these errors. Okay, because remember, each value you're using, basically you're approximating the, the slope of each of the tangent lines at their respective points. So that's already, that's giving us a little bit of error, right? Um, and so those errors start to add up, okay? Especially if the function is, uh, if it's increasing at a very rapid rate, okay? So those errors will start to compound, okay? Um, so that is, you know, again, it's just an approximation, but at least, you know, we have, you know, we have something to work with. We also can make the H values or the step size, which is sometimes referred to these, as, right? these H values, these H values is just a step size. Uh, we can make those smaller to get us a better approximation. And in real life, in real applications, um, sometimes we're not interested in working with the whole curve. Maybe we only need the, maybe we only need um, information from a certain part of the, um, you know, certain part of the uh, curve or function. Okay, so we don't need to worry about. Um, we don't need to approximate, or we don't need the approximation of the whole curve. Just a small, just a portion of it, for whatever, um, for whatever reason. Okay. Um, so yeah, so doing this, this is how you know basically how it looks like when you're doing it by hand. Uh, who you know? Why would you? you know, why would anybody want to do this by hand? Um, other than just to illustrate as a, as a, you know, just to show you how it works. Um, ideally, you would definitely want to use a computational software tool. Uh, this is a relatively easy formula to implement, whether it's using MATLAB, Octave, or even Maple, Mathematica, all those, or even C programming, Java. Um, you can easily implement this. So, um, so I want to show you how to, or at least show you what it looks like in an octave. Okay. All right. All right. So I need to make sure this. All right, so here it is. Let me, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more.
All right, so this is the Euler method being implemented in Octave. Okay, obviously you want to clear out any of the, you know, whatever's in the cache memory. Um, and then I cleared out the screen here, which is CLC. Um, anytime, you know, anytime you're doing any kind of programming, you should always, it's always a good practice to, to time the code, especially if you're working, you know, with a very complicated program with millions of lines of code. Uh, because if something happens, um, and if you time the code, that can sort of give you, uh, basically, it gives you an idea of whether or not it's still running. Okay. Um, so that's just a good programming practice to time, time your codes. And also, you can use that information to, uh, to help optimize it. But in any case, let's move on here. Um, we have the initial value here. Okay. So I'm set, in this case, I'm using the same problem that we just went over. So we have that um, x and y. So x is you have that x is equal to zero, y is equal to one. Now the thing is, in Octave, just like in MATLAB, um, the indices the indices start with one, which is okay. We can shift everything because in our derivation we are assuming that we start from zero. Okay, so that's not a big deal. Okay. Um, these are my back. I'm using these. Um, these are going to be used to determine the um, stepping size is being used as h. So my max is four, my min is zero. So I'm going to go for zero to four for the solution. And there's my first order differential equation. So this is how you define a function in, in um, Octave. So you have to put the at symbol here. The at symbol tells you that you're going to treat this function dynamically, okay, which means that you can evaluate the function at the point okay, without having to redefine it. Okay. So this tells that it's going to be dependent on it, right? It's going to depend on X and Y for your inputs. And in this case, we are working with our, our um, differential equation is just Y. So if you have, for example, sine of X times Y, then you would just type in sine of X, Y, right? Okay. The number of points I'm using is 50, right? Therefore, you take the, basically you're getting your, your H value. In other words, your delta X value. So the length of the interval divided by the number of points. Okay. And then we start the recursion, okay? So this is how you do a loop in Octave. So it's very easy for n equals to two to n one, okay? We're doing, remember, doing 50 points here, okay? And then uh, we end it here. And so right here, this is what I talked about long ago. This is how you control your, or basically, this is how you go through the x values. Okay, starting with, you know, starting with X of one here, which in this case is zero. And because I'm shifting here, uh, I have to put in minus one here, okay. And then we have this, this line right here. This is mainly the, the iterative formula for, uh, for Euler's method, okay. And then, um, and then what I'm doing here after I, so basically I'm saving the X and Y values. Okay, so I'm, okay, so I'm storing what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go back to the board here. What I'm doing here is I'm storing these values, right? And then once we store them, right, then we can plot them and compare it with the actual solution, which would be really neat. All right, so there we go. So we plot these. We have our x and y value. So once they're there, once they're there then we can then we can go ahead and plot those. Okay, and I'm plotting those in a red color with an asterisk. Okay, so that's what that's what this indicates. Okay, um, I'm using asterisk as opposed to a dot because sometimes dots are a little bit hard to read. Okay, and then I say hold on, hold on, just means like okay, wait. Um, Wait, there's going to be another plot, so it will tell Octave to hold on and then not delete the not to delete the original plot. So the um, so I'm going to basically plot uh, the actual solution along with the, uh, the I should say the approximate solution along with the exact solution, so you can compare side by side. Um, I did an error here. Okay, um, so if you've taken linear algebra, then you you know. You talked about the norm. The norm could be used to approximate the error, okay? Or to, sorry, not to approximate, to uh, come up with the error. So basically you take, um, we're taking the difference between, 
the y value, which is based on our approximation, minus the e to the x value, right? E to the x is the, is the a solution, uh, is the actual solution to this problem. So, so this is what's called a um, error. And basically, it's called an error norm. And it's a way, it's again, it's a way to check to see how good of an approximation we have. And then, um, okay, and then what I do here, okay, so in here I'm doing 50 points. In here I'm doing 100 points. So obviously I'm going to use a smaller step size. So I'm going to come up with another approximation, right? Um, this approximation will be, uh, you'll see that the plot will be closer to the, um, to the actual function, okay? So going through the same idea, same procedure as before, just using, um, just using a same, uh, different uh, or a different number of points. Okay. And then again, so I check the error. I do the error, I do an error check here. Okay. By using the, um, the error norm. So by the way, there's a built-in, uh, there's a built-in feature in Octave that does the norm. It's the same one. It's using the same idea, uh, the Euclidean norm. Okay. Uh, that you, uh, if you've taken linear algebra, then you're familiar with that. Uh, there's different type of norms though, but it's definitely using the Euclidean norm. Um, and then we're plotting, right? So we're going to plot that solution. And I'm using a blue color asterisk in this case. So the red color, red color will be um, the one for 50 points, and this one will be for 100 points. And then I'm going to plot the exact solution, which is just e to the x, and I'm doing that in a black color. So that's what. Uh, this case, okay. so it's going to. So obviously, this will be a, a, a you know, this will be a continuous function, right? Uh, the approximate solution is is discrete, okay. And then I just go through um, putting in the legend here, okay? title it, uh, putting in a labeling the x and y axis, and then just kind of displaying the summary of, summary of results. All right, so let's run this. Okay, let's go up here. And there it is. Look at that. Okay. So there's what it looks like. Okay. You can see here's the uh, the one in the in the black color. Here is the exact exact solution. The run the one in the red is using fifty points, and the one in blue is using uh, one hundred points. Make sure I shared that properly here. Okay, there it is. All right. Um, so yeah, so you can see again, again, you can see that you know the errors are starting to, um, you know, they, they're starting to add up here, right? They're sort of falling off. They start to fall off around here. And that's because it's, this function starts to increase, right? It's increasing um, rapidly, right? So it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good approximation, uh, especially when it's like around here where, where the function looks linear, but then, you know, it's, again, it starts to, uh, these errors start to propagate. All right, so let's go back here about the um, editor window. Here's the command window. This is basically the um, summary of results. Um, it's just telling you, right, giving you the number of points that I use. There's the error, right? The first error, here's the second error. So obviously the second error should be smaller than the uh, first uh, error because we're using more points, so that's a given. And then there's the uh, elapsed time. Right. Is, okay, there's our results. Okay, so this is a, um, like I said, Euler's method is a very, um, it's a, it's a robust technique, but it, you know, but it's, uh, and it's, it's very easy to implement in any kind of uh, computational uh, tool, such as Octave. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, 
And if I have some time later, uh, I'm gonna, I would like to do a discussion on Manjakata method, which is, um, it's an even better approximation, uh, but it requires a little bit more, um, it does, it's, a, it's a little bit more involved, okay? But that's a trade-off, right? And whenever you're doing numeric, anything in numerical analysis, if you want better results, then you have to put in more um, effort, okay? You have to give it more information, okay? So I'll stop here and I'll see you all next time. Take care.